male figure skater came out of him. <laughs> it's like one of the Jersey Shore coming out as being a douchebag. <laughs> Welcome to the first ever episode of Sticky Business, the only podcast that talks to you about, well, there's probably other ones, but this is the one we're doing that talks to you about the comedy uh, industry from a beginning, you know, I, uh, myself, I have, uh, th- I'll be at my third year, I've actually all completed my third year on the 18th of April coming up, and how long have you been doing it, Anthony? I, I look at it as... Um my sophomore year, actually, I treated it as my sophomore year um, in high school of comedy. He's, yeah, he's no longer getting his uh, head flushed in comedy room bath, you know. Bathroom. Exactly, so exactly. And the fact that and I've been doing comedy on and off since the mid '90s, but mostly improv and uh, with working with you, but doing it as a comic by itself. Yeah, it's my second year. Awesome. So, um, it's a little different. Uh, performing in uh, Austin than it is in California, would you say? Oh, I would say so. so just the fact that I have performed in both locations. You know, it's the same with you as well. Oh, I um, thought you were trying to be a big shot there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Mr. Like world you Traveler. Thing, I've been to two cities. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I know. Actually, I've been to others. Las Vegas. You won't go down the list. I mean, you're, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. time on a cruise ship, but that was a different story and a whole different story. <laughs> Keeps blowing his head up, just getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Why not? I'm my biggest fan. <laughs> you you got to be. In this industry, if you don't love yourself, oh, that crowd sure as hell isn't going to. Oh, you got that right. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. It's yeah, the well, truth. I, I uh, just performed myself at Barbara Morrison's out here in La Merritt Park. That is in the hood down in Crenshaw, Los Angeles there. That is the place where they tell white boys not to go. How do you get in a place like that? How are um, you? Well, I'm in a smart car. It's really hard to see me. I'm almost like a ghost, you know. It's, <laughs> no, I ain't gonna steal I just, a smart car. I just, dr- a smart I just car. drive from one tree to another tree. I'm like hiding behind each one. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here you we go. you know, know the black the there. black folks that check out your car. I said I can't get anything for that. I can't just pawn that car. <laughs> Mexicans look at my car. They're like, you can't fit a lawnmower in there, man. <laughs> so, no, but you know that's it. It. it uh, it's a great club, actually, and it's a really good neighborhood. It's not, you know, I never hear gunfire, ever, yet. Have, have you? Are you serious? Yeah, no, I'm very serious. Um, they also, the first time I was there, they wouldn't let me into the bathroom. Apparently, it's blacks only. I don't know. But no, I mean, that, it's great. We, we actually, the show is hosted. Uh, it's produced, actually, by Cornelius Grant of The Temptations. And uh, there's a couple girls, Andrea Loney and uh, Rose Hines, that run it. And they're just awesome, real sweethearts. And, oh, that's um, awesome. You're working with a temptation. Yeah, you, you know. Him? Have you sang with him yet? Come on, tell the truth. Have yeah, I, I've got up there and, oh, I got sunshine. Oh, Hang on, no, I'm going to get it. Hang on, let me give, give me a minute. Oh, I, no, damn, I'm not going to get it. It isn't going to happen. <laughs> well, what's going on here in Austin right now is um, it's pretty big. It's called the Funniest Person Austin Contest, FPIA, mm. for short. Um, it's the 28th annual, so this has been going on for a long time. And this is where, like, the real comics have been doing their circuits around Austin for the last year, trying to show off their goods. I mean, you see these guys all the time and work their material, and then you see these are people in the audience who actually see comedy for the first time for new comics. So they're really trying to shine. And it is, it's, it, it is a, to me, is a, a I don't want to talk bad about it because I go on on Monday, so I don't want to trash it because <laughs> I'm going well, on there. But it sounds kind of like it's a uh, it's uh, the state beauty pageant as opposed to the local beauty pageants, right? You're just kind of moving on up a little bit. Hoping yeah, and, and hoping that you become Miss Texas. Yeah, you you, you want to show that you've shown some growth. I mean, you're going to be going in there first round. You get eliminated. You're, those are your new uh, people on stage. First time doing comedy or just starting out. 
you know so you don't, and you see the people have been polishing their work they always advance because they've been really working on the material it shows I mean you go out there and do stand up every day it's, it's your, your material is going to be cleaner faster you know it's going to be yeah. much tighter and, and you you want to be a comic that's how you do it absolutely I couldn't agree with you more as a matter of fact the best advice I ever got was that if you want to be a comedian if you want to really do it you literally you need to get up on stage between somewhere between like 12 and 16 times a week you know if you're really doing it you should be able to hit up two mics a night six days a week I understand you might need some time to yourself from time to time but again if you're not out there in the industry you're not really in the industry, you know. It's so funny you said that because when you first said that, I tried to go out like two or three times a night. I was happy going out once a week. So it shows the commitment that you had compared to me. And I thought this was enough time. But it filled my wrong. ass up. I, I didn't stick to that commitment. I'm not living <laughs> up to it. So, you know, say what you want. I got a long way to go, but I'm on the road, you know. And it's one of those things, at least I acknowledge it. I'm not going to fool myself and, and lie yeah. to the audience and say, yeah, I'm out there doing it every day. I should be, you know, and you should be too. If you want to be a real comic, you know, everybody out there listening, you guys, you need to be performing. If you're not, it's a hobby, you know. You want to make this a business? Act like it's a business. And actually, for a hobby, it's one of the few hobbies that actually get freebies from the jump. I mean, you get free drinks, you know, sometimes you get food, you know. The only thing that's cut out of your pocket is gas. I gotta bring right. my own. They don't bring, give me no free weed or anything. I always gotta bring my own. You have to. You, I've been paying. You. you, you get, <laughs> I didn't know you had to pay for it. I thought it's part. It was. Here's something that's kind of cool. I mean, when I tell people I've actually done the comedy store, um, they're impressed here in Austin. I mean, you're out there in L.A. It's not that <laughs> impressive. I'm not trying to downplay it. No, it actually it, is though, man. To do, you know. Because you can, anyone can get a group of their friends. You can get 20 of your friends in a room and get them to laugh. But um, to have a room full of people that you don't know, you've never met before, and, and your material that you come out with. Because I've seen people get out there and have no laughs, have silence coming back at them. Mm-hmm. So it's not just that they're easy with the laughs. You know, it is easier because they're drunk and it's more they're in the attitude that, you know, they're at a club where they're expecting to laugh. You know, they're mm-hmm. there for the mission, you know. But the fact that, that if you can get a whole room, like I, I, and I'm not trying to like like brag on this, I just lucked into the into the gig. Mm-hmm. But on my birthday a couple of years ago, um, I did a show on the main stage of the comedy store, and the headlining act was Bobby Lee. And so I had a sold out room. I mean, they opened all the curtains. I had like 400 people in that room, and I had them with me. You know what I mean? At one yeah. point, I, I'm doing my pussy hair joke. They all booed me because I said I wanted to bring back the Harry Bush, uh-huh. and and every guy in the room boos me, and and that gives me something to feed off of. I got a laugh on my response to it. Mm-hmm. I ended up I worked that thing, and and by the time I made my points at the end, I had everybody, including the guys and the women, back on my side. You mm-hmm. know, and it was a blast, and that's. You know what I mean? That's not something you can do if you're not funny. That's not something you can do if they don't give a shit. They here's will something. ignore the fuck out of you if they don't like you. Well, that's true. It's so funny you mention that because here's the truth. I mean, the first time I've done stand-up... I mean, I've done a couple in the past, but when I did the cap, uh, sorry, the comedy store with you, mm-hmm. it was the first time I was doing comedy to people who have never seen me, never heard of me before. It was just my face, my material, and... Am I funny? Because, you know, after a while, people get, understand your humor. You can make people laugh if they get to know you for a little while. Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm trying to say? Exactly. But actually go on stage where no one knew who the fuck I was. I got seven minutes. That's mm-hmm. a long time. You know? But and I honestly, not to blow myself up, but I think I did pretty good for the first show. Yeah, if you're dying on stage, seven minutes is forever. It, I, <laughs> The first time I ever froze on stage, and I don't know why I did, I had no reason to, is when the first time my wife's uh, family went to one of my shows, her sister happened to go, happened to be at that show. Not I was intimidated by her, but it, the timing just sucked. <laughs> I had the blank, I had the blank deer light face, and it felt like it was three minutes, and it turned out to only be 25 
of complete silence from me, but that is a long time. You're right. It feels like forever. Yeah, if, and, if nothing's going on, ho, 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 man. <laughs> And the, that's and the part is, that's so, funny. Uh, last night there was a guy who had the best line. He got up there and he he looked out at the crowd. He was he's new to the business, you can kind of tell, but he was good. Uh-huh. And his first thing is he looked out and he says, "Why is it the bright lights make you forget everything you were just thinking?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, that happens so often, you know." And the thing is to have notes, but try not to be too obvious when you're looking at your notes. You know, bring some water, bring something to, to some yeah. you so that you're like, oh, I'm on my way for this. Yeah, and it, and it's you know that's true. There's still comics. There's one comic on stage with his iPad, pretty much reading from it, doing a set. I shouldn't have said that because there's only one person in Austin doing it. <laughs> What uh, what clubs are? Is there a lot of opportunity for open mic in uh, in Austin or in around Austin, those areas? Uh, that's a very good question. There's lots of places, and the thing that's pretty cool and is like if you want to do comedy in Austin, there's one website that tells you everything as far as open mic goes, and it's called Last Gas. I'm sorry, Last Gas Comedy dot com. Excellent. All right, and you click on that website, and you'll see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and it's not all like, like you know how you have those cafeteria calendars. You know, it's like all mm-hmm. that is all spread out. It's really simplified on the left. You'll see on the right panel, it makes it so simple to see what's going on, where it is, how to sign up. And simple as that. I'm Excellent. sure you check check it out right now if you want to while we're talking. But um. That's something, and you can ask your questions about it too. It may be good for the show. Um, There's also for Los Angeles, uh, I, and I think this uh, this site goes for more sta- uh, you know areas than just LA, but uh, it's called Bad Slava b a d s l a v a dot com. And uh, if you look that up on Google, say just look for like Los Angeles open mics. It's the first one that'll come up. You know, the Los Angeles comedy open mics, and they'll list everybody. They list, I mean. They give you day by day exactly what's happening. You know, the funny thing is that uh, across the top of uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way through to Saturday is the first one on the list is Marty's. Marty's, Marty's. You can always go to Marty's. Um, it is Been a there. cool, cl- yeah, it, and it's a great place because there's multiple rooms now. They actually have three rooms that run at once: the main mm-hmm. stage, and then a little outdoor place, and then another side working room. Oh yeah, no, I mean that was there. That was the green room when we were there. They're hanging exactly, out there. Yeah, when we went there. And so now they're all they're all working mic rooms, yeah. and you literally can keep yourself going like the whole time you're there if you do it right. You know, you get very little downtime. Well, I'm I mean that's the primary thing to do when I go to L.A. I go to Marty's. I was gonna make a thing. I think it's cool. I like yeah. it. it's a good place. See, we don't have anything like that. That's one thing Austin is missing out. I'm I'm sure a lot of comics are they have their little clicks and they hang out and talk about the routine. But what I learned in L.A. is that one place you took me to where you do your set in broad daylight and a bunch of comics and a coffee shop, and they actually give you ideas or how to do this. What was yeah, that? That's called thing? the Spot Cafe in um, in uh, Culver City. It's on. It's uh, uh, God, the spot is. Um, give me just a second. I'm going to look that up because I want to get you guys the right address. And it is every Saturday at 2 p.m. I get there early because you you want to sign up early. Uh, but it's a great setup. They you do uh, I think it's five minutes, and then you get five minutes of feedback from the crowd, to giving you pointers, advice, and it's good advice. It's not people you suck or anything like that. You actually yeah. really get good stuff. And, and that's the truth. And that place there is the reason why I ended up doing the show that night because it gave me the confidence it's, to go and do it. Because we did, remember that's how we did it when I went out to L.A. We did it's that. Four four five five Overland yeah. Avenue. It's run by a guy named L.G. Ross and a woman, Vicki Nissen. They're awesome. Uh, they also run the warehouse uh, open mic. I think it's on Monday nights now. It does change from time to time, so you might want to check. Mm-hmm. But uh, the, the warehouse, they have an open mic, and then they have a regular show. It's a great show. It's a, it's in a restaurant, so you do kind of get an audience that's sort of trapped in a way. You know, it's a captive audience. And, uh, Stay here. You're going to eat your food and you know, comedy. But then at the same time, if you want to work out here, oh, there's some rooms. Like you go out to um, like uh, Paladino's or you go to, uh, you know, uh, Liquid Zoo out on Sepulveda. These are places that are tough rooms that people don't care that you're on stage. So what you really need to do is um, you need to find the person that hears you. 
you need to find the one guy that, that chuckles, the one girl that kind of laughs, and focus like a laser beam on them, because that's going to be your audience for the night. I think the <laughs> toughest room we have in Austin, and it's, it's world known, it's called the Velveeta Room. Mm. In, um, Austin, it's on 6th Street. Now, you want to talk about a tough room, you go in there, no, I mean, comics, no. You better have your A game on, because the, the, they don't heckle. This, they just won't laugh. <laughs> you can have a yep. room full of people, and if you don't make them laugh, they won't laugh. And it's, it's a, I mean, it's, I've been there twice. The first time they ate me alive, and the second time I, um, I did okay. I did, I felt that I did okay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't bomb, but I didn't suck either, so, I mean, it, it was fucking pretty cool. And that's the Bell Beater Room. World known. Everybody knows that place. I mean, even top comics go there. It's on 6th Street. Well, it's, no, yeah, it's good. Uh, and th- those are the kind of places you want to go to because that's where well, absolutely, you're it, you know? absolutely. Now, as far as if you're going to start doing comedy in Austin, there's so many places to go. Of course, you got the Cap City Comedy Club every Sunday. I played you there. Sign up, you sign up on. That's where you played. You did that place. Um, uh, a whopping three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but and I was introduced as Ross last name. Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm uh, Ross Miller, <laughs> your punctual pothead. I don't know if you could tell. Uh, to the other gentleman on the show, Tony Lamar. He there you go, Tony Lamar. He's big and bad, man. So, bad aren't you? Aren't you like the chocolate yes. tsunami or some shit like I'm that? The ch- oh, the chocolate tsunami of love. Oh, man, now you're starting <laughs> to get creepy. I think the, the, this oh, this uh, podcast is going to get a restraining order if you keep that up. <laughs> it right gets right. laughs. It's one of my jokes is has never failed. Every time I tell that joke, it. it Pretty oh, much awesome. gets yeah. laughs. I think that's um, a good one. And that's the one thing you start learning is like, I always worry about, I keep saying the same jokes, but when I s- s- took a while to realize that it's always a different audience. Yep. It may be the same comics, it may be, you know, it's me, but that's one thing I tell people starting out, just work your material. Like, you, you said something from one of the commentaries that you watch, is that when they first tell a joke, they start laughing, and then they keep saying it over and over and over, it seems like it lost its flavor. It's just that you're so used to hearing it and doesn't become funny anymore. Yeah, never forget what was funny originally. Because the thing that made you laugh your balls off, you know, six years ago, will still make an audience laugh today because they don't know it. They haven't exactly, heard it. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm starting to realize when I do my set. I always worry about the comics. That he did it last year, he did this and that. <laughs> but when I look at the audience, it's different people. I'm not saying that I'm doing the same jokes I did a year ago. Um, but there's still little nuances from it that kind of um, remnants from those jokes, whatever you want to say. Um, but I always like to see myself do new things all the time. But as a comic, you're starting out, man. Just get out there and beat that joke to the ground. And you honestly keep laughing, you know, and you'll keep, that's all that's important, making them laugh. But that's one thing I'll say. And record yourself, because you can find the parts that don't work, and you can either punch them up or cut them out or do whatever you need to do. You know, this is the thing that I do with my comedy is I'll I'll take what I'm doing and I try to even if I haven't really written it out before, like if I if it's a concept in my head or something that I just know that I can just riff on on stage, I'll I'll still write it out like you know as I would say it, you know, and then I sit there and I look like what words are unnecessary and I start taking words out, you know, and just make that thing tighter. Because the difference between doing three bits on stage or doing six bits on stage in a ten minute time, you know, or one really good bit, you could actually work out something that might stretch out into a half an hour on another thing, and you could actually cut out all the bullshit, and you've got yourself an awesome tight ten minute bit, you know. So so don't, you know, don't try to over talk your jokes. The somebody, the one of the first guys I ever worked with, Matthew Taylor, a really good guy out here. Um, he's the guy who originally got me in at the comedy store. I, that was the first time I was ever on stage was, was through Matt. And he told me that uh, a bigger buildup does not mean a bigger laugh. The punchline will always be the same no matter how long you take to tell it. Mm-hmm. You know? Unless there's something there that's a point that you need to make in order for the punchline to work, it's not necessary. I, I totally agree with that, totally. Yeah. That's, that's one thing is trying to cut the fat and just get right to the the punchline and like there's some of my jokes that were very winded at first and as time went on i start cutting out slowly and now just well once like three sentences now down to one as, as an example 
the trouble I have now is that because of that logic, I have a very difficult time listening to people's bullshit. It's like, can't you just cut out the fat, get to the point? <laughs> I don't care. I understand how the story goes. Just tell me what I need to know. Just give me the facts, man. Oh, just my God. Yeah, now I'm an asshole. You know? so, well, not now. I mean, I always was. But Oh, no, no. You were I'm, never an asshole. Yeah, no, I'm just more of an asshole is all that that is. No, it's, it's a matter of degree. That's all You've it is. You've been upgraded. You've I've been upgraded. More, I'm the only person that gets a, a promotion in the asshole dome. That's, that's the only job I've ever got a promotion at. That's yeah. fantastic. So tell me, talk about L.A., the L.A. comic scene at your level right now. What do you consider yourself now, an LA comic, or you're still new, uh, I'm st- uh, open I'm st- mic? I'm still way open mic because I mean, two things. The number one thing about LA, and I imagine this is pretty much the same in any city you go to. You know, the industry is a bringer industry. You have to have a crowd. You know, if you go to do the comedy store, they expect you to bring five to seven people minimum. You know, and and yeah, you can bring your friends. But after a while, they've heard your bullshit, you know, and you your friends start wanting to come out and spend 20 bucks to park and, mm-hmm. you know, another 20 on drinks and all this other stuff. So it, it's it's a marketing thing, you know. In a way, it's almost like multi-level marketing. It's like the Amway of of careers, <laughs> you know. But, but you- nobody's going to pay you if you're not able to fill the room, you know, and that's mm-hmm. the fact. So that's that's the key to crack is you have to learn how to market yourself to people that you don't know. You know, get pe- get strangers to show up. What I notice so, here in Austin is that everybody is social networking, promoting like a motherfucker here. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're using things like Vine, Twitter. You know, they're using um, Facebook, of course. You know, mm-hmm. but the thing is that this is such a um, independent driven town, far as as an artist, far as in the music. Mm-hmm. I mean, freaking paintings or whatever. They thrive on this type of entertainment. So getting the word out, just getting it downtown, it spreads like wildfire. That's the one thing I like about Austin. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a, a, a mecca of, of art here, as far as my, I, I'm concerned. I mean, it's incredible how you go to a comedy show, they're promoting themselves. they got stickers. You know, they got their CDs are selling. You know, I mean, these, I mean, I'm talking about at open mics that I'm going to. You know yeah. they're here. They're, they're promoting, and they also they take what they do. I don't know about L.A., but you get a cluster of comics. They'll get their, their resources resources together and drive to uh, to, um, to like Houston or Dallas, mm-hmm. or you know, and it's even sometimes down to the valley or like where I do. I go down Poor Ape, which is Poor Arandis. Now I'm starting to do that and networking down there because there's a not touch there's an untouched market for comedy. So I'm going in there with my boys. It is when I see our comedy, and we're spreading word about our stuff, and the crowd gets bigger. And that's one thing I see here. I don't know how that in L.A., because that's La La Land, so... In L.A., there is literally one million different things you could go choose to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And especially in Hollywood, even more so. <laughs> you know, you can, do any, you can do anything. You walk down the street, go get your picture taken with fucking Frankenstein. You know what I mean? You can do what you want. It's Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So that's the whole thing is you gotta you gotta find a way to get people's attention. How do you get them out to the club? So that is the that's the key to crack, man. You know, that's the key to crack. Yeah. <laughs> but it's actually kind of them. funny because like I go I went to this club last night called the Lucky Lounge, and I wish I mean you can maybe look up, help me out here look at who played last night, um, and they were freaking awesome. They had maybe twenty people in the crowd. And they all have their iPhones out taking pictures. They're all sitting there um, using the Twitter to say, hey, I'm here at the Lucky Lounge and I'm watching this band. And it's just amazing how the, everybody's always networking, get the word out of their band that they're seeing or their friends where they are. And it's just actually seeing it being done. It's opened my eyes to the whole thing, how Twitter works. It's just, it is freaking nuts. Yep. You know, and buying it and information out there. And, and freaking Austin Comics, they really try to tap in that bloodstream. And the you thing know. in the industry is if you can show somebody that, that has money that you can make money, that you can bring in a crowd, mm-hmm. you know, that's it. That's all they want. They just want somebody that, oh, you can bring in a crowd? Come on in. Here, perform here. Exactly. Yeah. And the, the, and all the bars down there are trying to tap in there. And that's why you'll notice 
a pattern in Austin is that there'll be one place will be the hot spot for a while, and all the comics go there, and there'll be somewhere else. It's just not a lot of established places that's been ongoing for a long time, except for Cap City and this place called the New Movement, which I'm now currently involved with. And, um, which and I'll talk about that later if you want. Um, and it's just it does bounce around a lot, but you see the same comics out there, and there's a lot of comics in Austin I really, really like. You know, and um, I don't want to say them on here because I don't want anybody to take favoritism. But there's the, the ones they know, they know. Yeah, you know, I'm playing well, play safe here. I'm trying to play politician. No, that's so fine. And, and mostly, <laughs> I mean, because I've got so many comics that I can. There's people that that have been great to me. You know, so I, as I think of them, that's anybody out there. If you're hearing this and you're like, "Hey, that son of a bitch mentioned Matt, but he didn't mention me," mm-hmm. it's I think of it as I think of it because there's people that have been great. Stevie Mac just put me on his uh, the pilot episode of his sort of his TV show last week. You know, I was mm-hmm. actually got to uh, be out there. It, it's done like a late night kind of you know like a Craig Kilborn type of show, and so I was out there. Um, on uh, in the interview chair and in the chair next to me was um, was Jay uh, Davis from uh, Doctor Hook, and, you mm-hmm. know. So it was kind of cool. So it was sort of a mix up, and you got to and I got to tell some funny stories, and you know. So so there's people that have really helped me out. So if you didn't hear your name in this particular podcast, please keep listening. I guarantee I'll get to you as I remember it, or as we we'll come just- up on it. You know, just do a yeah. podcast and just say all these people listed names. <laughs> did, yeah, did I mention that I smoke weed? I don't know. So, but no, the thing, never. this is my advice really to people that are starting out, though. You know, get yourself a gimmick. Get yourself something easy to to identify yourself with. You know, something that, like, um, ask somebody that doesn't know you just to look at you and tell them what, what they think, like what would be their description of you. And work off that, you know, look, because the audience is seeing you for, for, for the first time. They don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. So when I walk on stage, I say, I'm Ross Miller. I'm the punctual pothead. And, you know, I do a joke about, you know, being punctual pothead, whatever that, you know, I have different lines I can throw out. And then later on at the end of the show, I tell them, hey, remember, I'm the punctual pothead. Look me up on Google. I don't have to say find me on Facebook. You put in the punctual pothead on Google and all my stuff comes up. Reverb Nation, mm-hmm. Twitter, Google, you know, all that stuff. Because I'm the only punctual pothead out there. You know, so that's, I think, you know, that's the thing is find the thing that, that's unique, you know. And, and, and get, uh, that's sound advice, sir. That's probably the best advice out there. Cause hey, actually, nobody's going right. to remember Ross Miller, all right? <laughs> <laughs> This is the end of uh, of our first episode of the uh, uh, what's it sticky business here the sticky uh, business sticky business yes and this is the podcast like I said where you will learn about the comedy industry as we learn it we will come and tell you we'll bring reports weekly and uh, this is going to be your first one so enjoy it and be sure to email us I'm Ross Miller I'm Tony Lamar you can catch me on uh, Twitter at Tony. Tony underscore Lamar, and, you know, of course, Facebook. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm out there. And you can find me as just punching the punctual pothead. And because look, he's smart. He knows yeah. how to fucking market himself. I learned it from the best, man. Um, anyway, yeah, it, uh, if you punch in just like uh, punctual pothead Twitter, punctual pothead Facebook, all that stuff, it'll just come up. You'll be able, It'll be the top link. You'll be able to see exactly all of my stuff. You can see my videos on YouTube. Check out my stuff on Jokio. And on, uh, I have some things posted on Feed and also on Reverb Nation. So check out all my stuff. I am a yeah. whore about can, my material. Yeah, you can just find my stuff on YouTube under Water Castle Shorts. All right, guys. Um, I'll see you next time. It's your world. Make something of it. Later. Bye.